Welcome to the Catbird Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin. Regent Street, Oxford. Not sure why anyone cares, except they're in shirts everywhere. Oxford cloth. Let's talk about it. Today we're going to talk about Oxford cloth. And I need to apologize in advance to all of my UK viewers and British English speakers, because we Southerners say socks and box and Oxford. <laughs> and what would be far lovelier is if I could pull off socks, 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 box, and I can't do it. Oxford, how do you say it? Ox, ox, socks, box, and Oxford. And that sounds far lovelier. And I'm trying to channel my Kate from the last Homely House. And I can do it for all of three seconds. So get your tea <laughs> and your biscuits or your crumpets or whatever gives you joy. And let's talk about this, these Oxford cloth shirts that are in your charity shops, op shops, and thrift stores. Mm. Man, that's good tea. Oh, hang on, that's such good tea. It is good tea. Like I wasn't making it up, it's such good tea. Shopping in the thrift store, for men's shirts that you will use either as quilting fabric or whatever else you use it for. At some point, you will run into a shirt that says Oxford on it. Usually it has it in huge letters, like it's super important. 100% Oxford cloth or classic Oxford or classic fit pinpoint Oxford, which pinpoint Oxford's totally different thing. So we're not gonna talk about that today. What we're gonna talk about is the classic Oxford cloth. And when I first started this whole getting men's dress shirts and then using them for other projects and then using them for quilts, I, I really kind of was like, I mean, I know what an Oxford cloth is. I know it by feel because I know almost everything by feel, but I really didn't understand why that would be so important to put on the label and what's kind of what's the point. So it turns out that Oxford cloth is a very specific thing. It's, it's not your imagination. The origin is with cotton threads that are woven in a symmetrical basket weave. And I read that and was like, oh, cool. And then I was like, I don't have any other any idea what other kind of weaves there are. <laughs> but if you think about the other types of shirts, twill has that classic diagonal grooved warp and weft. There's herringbone. Pinpoint Oxfords, you can barely even see the weave, but Oxford cloth, if you've had any experience with it, you know it by feel and by sight. It is a very specific type of weave and if you have a real coarse or open weave um, but especially if the if the threads are large you can actually see the basket weave and that is so cool to me it is considered one of the sturdiest fabrics um, out there and actually if you have soft side luggage it is a it is an oxford cloth weave um, it just usually there with nylon and all sorts of other synthetic materials that make it sturdier. But the, but the point of that is it really is sturdy and doesn't tear. It doesn't hold a lot of stains. A lot of times you can really wash stains out pretty easily. Um, it's just a good workhorse fabric, which makes sense if you think about things that have been done in a basket weave. They have a lot of give, especially fabric. Um, like if you took fabric strips and made a basket weave, if you put something sharp in it, the fabric gives away and the sharp thing goes through rather than cutting into the actual pieces of the basket. And it, that is true for 
men's shirts as well. So they're really rugged um, and you can get every variation of ruggedness um, in them. Sometimes you can, they're so coarse that the weave is actually really, really visible. And then the finer the weave, the finer the threads and the finer the weave, it's less obvious. But that's why it's in the label because it's it's just a good, solid men's fabric, men's shirt fabric, and it holds up to the wear and tear that working men have. And I think that's so great. Um, it's really, really neat to think about that when it was originally made, it was this idea of men are doing a lot of work and they need shirts that are not going to wear out. And this is one of the sturdiest fabrics. The trick about that with regard to using it as fabric for other applications is just like linen, it has some unique properties. And because of that, there are some considerations that you may have to have using it in a quilt. Um, so let's talk about that. I'm going to put my shirt away, get out some fabrics and show you a little bit about it. On my table, I have three separate Oxford cloth shirts that I have broken down and folded in such a way that it looks really like a little fat quarter package. Two of them are very similar in the size of the threads. And then this one that one of my viewers referred to this as persimmon. And man, do I love that word and that as a color. So we're gonna call this persimmon. Whether that's accurate or not is irrelevant for our purposes. <laughs> but it is a much finer weave. And so I wanna, I wanna show that to you. Interesting fact about Oxford cloth, they are, the, the thread weave is two threads that have been, that have been tightly wound together over or across two other threads that have been tightly woven together. It can also be two to one. And what that does from a practical standpoint, it makes a shirt sturdier, but it also introduces some texture and some color variation. So let me show that, show you that. All right, same blue as my example right here, but I have, I have made it fray on purpose. And what you can see is one set of threads, in this case, the way I'm holding it to me, the vertical ones are a just a good solid medium blue and the horizontal threads are white. And so you can see that dark contrast right there. This is the blue threads, these are the white threads. And what ends up happening in the middle is this nice light medium to pastel blue. And so if you look, if you were to like, <laughs> and as my vision is going, this is actually the way I look at things now. If you get it really close, you can actually see the way that the basket weave, just like if you had a basket, you would see where the dark threads go or where the dark fabrics or whatever go and the light. Same. So it has, okay, this is not a thing. I'm going to just make up a thing. Visual texture. <laughs> so it's it's just variation. It's, it's not texture. It's variation. And so the way that sometimes the white is a little bit bigger and sometimes the blue is a little bit bigger, the overall effect is one of just a light blue or a medium blue. But when you're looking at it up close, there's just variation there and that provides visual interest. Also, those threads that are used in Oxford cloth, because they're wound together, it's either two by two, so two over, two under, or two to one. And in this case, I actually, you can tell I kind of picked this piece to death, <laughs> which really suits my nature of, of, of kind of picking. The one thread in this case, this is a two over one. The one is the blue and the two is the white. And the way I could tell that is I actually pulled one of these white threads, which of course now that I'm picking at it, I cannot do. And in trying to get it started, the white actually separated. And 
I could see the two fine white threads. I'm trying to make it happen, but I just clipped my nails and I have no nails, so <laughs> I can't separate it. When you pull them apart, when it starts raveling, it will feel like the thread is really thick. Um, it's almost like a cord. And it's because it's two threads twisted together. And sometimes both threads are two, tr two threads twisted together. So, and because it has been woven in, out, in, out, it will have that crimp from where it was woven into the basket weave. And because of that, if you think about, if you've ever done any kind of weaving, even as a kid in craft classes, in art class, um, it is totally fine if you're in the middle of the fabric, but as you get further to the edges, you know, it wants to separate. If there's not something holding that together, glue or stitches or something else or other fabric, it really wants to, to fray and ravel. And so that is one of the challenges in specifically quilting with Oxford cloth. And I'm one of those people that as I sew with it, I'm fine when I'm sewing, but when I go to press it at, with my iron, if there's a loose thread, it's, it's almost like I'm compelled. So I'll pull it and then it loosens another one. And then I pull that one and then it loosens another one. And so what can happen if I'm not careful? I mean, look how easily that's pulling now. It's just, you get one free and then the next one comes loose. And you can see where it just wants to do that. And if I get this on my sewing table or on my ironing board, there's no way I can leave that alone. <laughs> like I can't. And so, in, and what I should do is snip it. But what I do is I, I pull that thread and it'll do this. And then sometimes with my piecing, um, and I just can't look at that. I mean, holy mackerel. I'm just like, even right now, I can't help myself. I'm just pulling. And because it's those two threads together, it takes up a wider space than like a pinpoint Oxford, for example. So you start pulling one thread and then the next thread, and now you're an eighth of an inch into your quarter inch seam allowance. Doesn't take that many to get down into your seam allowance. So kind of point number one in consideration if you're gonna work with Oxford cloth is you probably need to decrease your stitch size. Um, and that's so that when, if you do have this where you have picked and pulled, which please don't pick and pull, do not be like me. I feel like a lot of my videos are this cautionary tale. Try to leave them alone. And if it does, if the raveling does get down to your actual seam, if your stitch size is very small, it won't go any further. And so it won't ravel or fray into your piecing. So just like linen, and especially the coarser your Oxford cloth is, the more you need to decrease your, your stitch size, which makes sense. If it's little bitty threads, then they're gonna hold. But if it's big, fat threads, you pull one, it takes up a lot of space. So use a, use a small seam, um, sorry, stitch size. Um, most everybody's machine kind of defaults at two or two and a half. I would take it down to one or one and a half at the least. So, or at the most <laughs> least. Um, so that's, that's kind of point number one about consideration. The next point of consideration same reason for consideration, different, different behavioral change in response is it is a wonderful fabric to starch. And those of you who have been quilting or sewing for a while, you probably immediately know what I'm about to say, which is because it's a weave and it's a somewhat open weave, if you put starch into it, because it's such an open weave, it spreads throughout that basket weave. And if you let it dry, it literally glues those threads together. And so it provides another physical attachment so that it doesn't ravel. And I wanna show you that in practice. So let me get you some things to show you. This is a block from my Christmas quilt. 
that did not make it for Christmas. <laughs> and it's called Islet Lace by Kindred Quilt Company. I love it. It is so pretty. And it, I, it is going to be so much bigger than I expected. In doing this, I have a red, a green, and this is the blue. And you can see I've used that blue Oxford cloth. And it's nice and crisp and it looks so pretty. And I'm gonna turn this over and here's the back. And you can see where I've pressed my seams in such a way. And if you look closely, you can see where as that raveled and I pulled, that dark line is where those white threads are missing now. Thankfully, the one that I chose to show you doesn't, has not creeped into my seam allowance, but you can see where if I continue to pull those white threads as they pop up, there's one right there that I wanna pull so bad and I'm just resisting the temptation. That dark edge, everywhere you see that dark line is where I have pulled one of those white threads that's actually two threads. That's why it takes up so much space. So I have to have a little talk with myself when I, <laughs> it's like I have a come to Jesus meeting with myself before I go to press my blocks that have Oxford cloth in them. Do not pull the threads. So I get my little snips and I put them next to my station, my ironing station, and as I see them, I snip them because if I start pulling, the next thing I know, I'm going to be into my seam allowance. The way that I put things in my favor is I use spray starch and or starch. I actually make my starch. Um, I don't know if anybody else does that, but to me, it feels like it saves some money. I keep it in the fridge and then I just make it as I need it rather than just having a ton of it. So I have here two pieces. One of these is starch. And again, I wish there was a feel button. It feels a little bit like construction paper um, because it has starch in it and it is stiff. It, you can tell, or you may be able to tell, this one does not have starch in it and it's real stretchy. This one is not wanting to, I'm having to push harder to get that stretch. Actually, this little corner has a whole lot of starch. It doesn't, it's not giving at all, which is kind of what we want. And you can see these corners are kind of peeling up from the um, table. And there is some, some fraying on both, but if I were to, like if I pull this, can you see how easily, like I'm just barely even touching and those are just coming apart from that piece. I have extras of these, by the way. <laughs> so if this was one that I was gonna be using in my piecing, look at that. I mean, two more and I'm a, I'm a quarter inch in and now I have messed up my piecing. This one has been starched and I'm gonna, <laughs> okay, I got one started, but it doesn't, I don't know if you saw how easily, like I just am grazing it and it's coming loose. This one, because of that spray starch, when it hit a place that has a lot of spray, I'm gonna have to really pull that to make that come free. So it really does glue it down and it keeps it from fraying while you're using it. So if you're like me and you don't sit down and do a whole bunch all at one time and you're having to do, you know, work between your job or your life responsibilities and you're doing little bits and pieces and I'm really bad to move my piecing from one room where I cut them into my sewing area and then I'll put it over here while I work on something else. The more I handle this, I mean, I'm not doing this with my fabric. <laughs> Usually, but you know, as you're moving things around, it pulls those threads free. And then, then I can't leave it alone. Maybe everybody else has more self-control than I do. But if they're starched, then there is something that helps you. And then I can get my little snips and go, and then that works a little better. You can also tell PS how I did not cut this on the grain. <laughs> because when I pulled that thread, so, this is another consideration. Actually, it works out that I did this. If you want your pieces to be on the grain, it's really easy to find the grain. You just pull one of those long threads or two or three. And then now I know if I wanted to cut this really straight on the grain, I would cut right down that line, right down that dark line. So you can use it in your favor 
and ravel it on purpose and then cut your pieces. Um, and then after you cut your pieces, I really would advise to use as much starch as you feel comfortable using. It makes it not as enjoyable to sew because it's really stiff. And if you like the feel of fabric and you like sewing and you like the feel of that going through your hands, it does feel a little cardboardy, little construction paper-ish. Um, but what that does for you is when you go to press your seams and handle your blocks, I did actually starch these. I can feel them and it keeps it from raveling. So just a good thing to know, it actually operates a lot like linen um, because it's, especially the ones that are all cotton, it does absorb moisture, which is great as a men's shirt. It is, can be great when you're quilting with it. If you use steam to press your blocks, it will absorb that and can stretch um, potentially a little bit out of place. So you wanna be careful about that. Because it's cotton, you can use a hot iron. You can use a hot, dry iron. And if you have starched it and you use a hot, dry iron, it will hold that crease the way you want it. Um, so yeah, so it's just that kind of idea of it's a solid color, but it's not really a solid color. It's not heathered, but it gives that visual variation and interest. It is, especially if you get a real thick one, I have a couple of those that I can show you. Um, it There's a lot of body to it. Let me get those. These happen to be stripes. Um, this one is has been worn so much, it is like cotton balls. It's so soft, it's just, it's almost fuzzy. And when they are thick, like these two happen to be, it's substantial and it would add to the weight of a quilt and it's enjoyable to work with. It doesn't feel flimsy at all. So that can be one of the benefits of working with Oxford cloth and just something you can know. I have actually used this very fabric in a quilt. And again, I mean, again, with the raveling, it pulled into the actual stripes when I used it. And I suspect this would be the same. And again, you can see the dark blue on on one plane and the white on the other, and it comes out with this kind of pastel blue. This one is a dark purple, but ends up reading a medium purple stripe. So that's just a few things to think about with regard to Oxford cloth. It is widely available in men's shirts, and, and it's just a real common thing to find. So if you do see that, that's, you know those things going in, like, oh, I love this color. I love this yellow. I love this blue. I love this pink. Um, I love this persimmon. But when you go to sew with it, there are some considerations that you have to make. So thanks for being with me today as I've given you a few things to think about with Oxford cloth, Oxford, Oxford cloth. And um, I hope it's helpful for you, and I hope it helps you use your shirts really effectively as you do your next quilt project. I'm Kathy Martin. This is the Catbird Quilts. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>